to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The rich ruleth over. That's it. That if you sustain the wealth of the kingdom, it can give you a leverage to rise to a position of influence where you can exact dominion over individuals, over a system, over a territory. The rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Two more scriptures. Genesis chapter 42. We'll start from verse 1 and 2. Genesis 42. This is Jacob now. Genesis 42. 1 and 2. Please help us. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, everybody say corn in Egypt. Corn in Egypt. There was corn. There is nothing wrong with corn. The only problem is the location. Just keep that scripture there. It is dangerous when only Egypt has corn because Egypt is not a place that honors God. However, there is, that is the only place that has corn. The Bible says when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt because of the sheer hunger of famine Jacob said to his sons why do ye look upon one another verse 2 he says behold I have heard that there is corn in Egypt now go down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die a prophet without corn will still die please listen to this the only thing that takes the saints to Egypt is hunger. Hunger has a, a power of invitation that you cannot resist. It will draw you from anywhere you are to where you will be destroyed. Was it not because they went to Egypt that they were saved for a while and then later became slaves? Hunger will always take the church to Egypt. I have seen that there is corn, even though I do not like the location, there is nothing I can do about it. Because if we do not go to that location, although we are prophets, we will die. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, the fourth pillar of dominion and influence. Verse 13. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 13. This wisdom I have seen under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Uh-huh. We're reading to verse 16. There was a little city, so it's talking about a city, and few men within it. The Bible says, and there came a great king against it and beside it, and built great bulwarks against it. Sin 2. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. Everybody say it. Poor wise man. One more time. The Bible says, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet, no man remembered that same, it doesn't talk of wisdom again. Wisdom has finished his assignment. Yet, no man remembered that same poor man. And then here was my conclusion, 16. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nigeria, Lagos, Covenant Nation, Wafbeck, nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words. So, wealth becomes the trade that carries wisdom to serve it well. The poor man's wisdom is despised. Can I tell you this? I know that there are abuses here and there, and people have made all kinds of things out of what we call prosperity, but in the name of Jesus, reject poverty. Amen. It's an advice. Reject it. 
Think of your children while you are rejecting it. Think of your loved ones while you are rejecting it. I give you an advice by the road of the apostolic and the prophetic. In these end times, reject poverty. It's an individual choice. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. Do not allow anyone flatter you into believing that with mediocrity and lack, somehow you will still navigate your way to rise to influence. It's a joke, not in today's world. These are the pillars of influence. Let's do a quick recap before we touch on the last one and then we round up. That the first pillar is growth and transformation. The second pillar is value and productivity. The third pillar is wisdom and excellence. The fourth pillar is wealth and abundance. The fifth pillar is the supernatural. The ministry of signs and wonders. A mysterious pillar that is able to lift the name of Jesus and the banner of his name and his praise across territories. Acts chapter 5 and verse 12 down to 16. Shiba Kasubariata. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all in one accord and in Solomon's porch. We're reading to verse 16. And the rest does not... And of the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people did what? Magnified them. The word magnified here is not a wrong word. It is the word that was buttressed in Galatians 1 and verse 24. And they glorified God in me. God can be glorified in and through a man's life. The excellency of your results, the display of the power of the kingdom, when men begin to lift you, then you lift his own name. So it becomes higher than you. He says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men to myself. Back to that scripture, please. Acts chapter 5, we're reading now from verse 14. The Bible says, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter's passing. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. I just sang Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. It says to stand in the way. Please give us that scripture. As I just read this, it just touched me. How far from the standard of God today's church is. That a man's shadow, he was not in a crusade, he was passing. Today, blind eyes open and thank God we celebrate miracles. But look the efforts that are dissipated. We call upon God. We clash cymbals. We play keyboard. We sing. We jump. We lay hands on our head. I'm not against those things. But I'm saying look the effort. As though God does not want to show up. There is something we are missing. We need to return to the authentic place of provable power. Dimensions of the grace of God that dumbfounds principalities and powers. You are a ministry here. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Thank God for the trickles of miracles that we see. But in ancient times, we will not even be qualified to be ushers. Not even in the welfare department. Find out the condition that you had to go through. Show us the ancient path. Would you lead us along eternal highway? 
We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. I have seen miracles and signs and wonders in my life. I say it with all humility. But do you know every time I read scripture, sometimes I just close my Bible and tears will just come down from my eyes. I say, Lord, who deceived us like this? Apostle Joshua Selman, a great man of miracles. You read your Bible and see that we do not come close to the least spiritual people in those days. Now, this is not condemnation. This is how you are challenged. Men can clap you into dimensions where you plateau in the spirit and stop rising and stop growing. There must be a perpetual hunger and that hunger comes when you compare yourself with the reference of scripture, not among yourselves, for they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. The Bible says the shadow of Peter that you come and buy a soft drink just because your hand touched someone's shop as soon as you leave you brought heaven you come to visit someone you just sat down on their chair and say, peace be unto this house. Suddenly, storms, 10-year-old storms, they hear your voice like a tornado in the realm of the spirit. Shalom, be still. Church of the Lord Jesus, wake up. Although we have seen the hand of God, let's pat our backs only briefly. There is a lot to do. If we need to rise to a position where the church will not be silent, it will not come by singing. There is a dimension of the supernatural we need to reintroduce. The foundation of the church in Nigeria, please take it higher for me, my spirit is fired up now. Gee. The church in Nigeria, have you read about our fathers? The men and the women who handed this gospel to us, they were men who were not really educated, but they were men who had fire. These were men who met God and they knew they met him. I was watching a video one day and I began to cry. One of the old Yoruba prophets, I don't know how the Holy Ghost led me to that video, and he was talking. And the sheer glory and presence that emanated, I didn't know what he was saying, and honestly, I didn't care. You, you didn't need to be a Yoruba person to be blessed. The power that came from that man. I said, God, what has happened to us? Where did we miss it? This is my final session with you. This has been my obsession to tell the church, thank you for what you are doing, but let us wake up. If we think we are going to win the world at this pace, think again. There is a dimension of the power of God this is not for preachers. This is not about ministry. The effulgence of the life and the power and the glory of God. That the Holy Ghost came upon meetings that refused to finish. They were supposed to be two hour meetings. Well intentioned and someone just raised a song and that song brought his majesty and people there was no preacher again ah. oh lord you are my god psalm 63 says early will i seek you it says my soul longs for you my flesh thirsts for you it longs for you as in a dry and a weary land where there is no water verse 2 is the reason to see thy power and your glory in my life the same way I saw in the sanctuary let me tell you this this is a generation that seeks for signs 
These are not generations who will be loyal for nothing. The generation of our fathers that could be loyal to you, whether they understand you or not, this generation is intelligent enough to say, if you claim that God heals, here is my sick son. I told God, do not send me if all you give me is a sermon. Do not send me if all you give me is a lecture. Do not send me if all I will go with is my brain. Do not send me if all I go with is a song. Let there be a token of your presence upon my life. Let there be a token of your presence upon my hand. Why will I preach and when I'm done we just share the grace and the sick go back sick, the oppressed go back oppressed. Listen, if we do not rise to this level of the supernatural in the body of Christ, a time will come, people will shout amen, but we know they don't believe what we are saying. And can I tell you this? The desperation of men is beginning to push them to look for solutions because men are not fools. If they don't find it with you and they discern God is not with you, they will respect you for who you are, but they will quietly go and look for where to get real solutions. Many testimonies we share in church today did not come from church. I'm sorry to say it, forgive me, we'll reconcile after the meeting, but it's true. Because when men become desperate, they can do anything. Don't toy with the desperation of men. I will not watch my son die. If I come to you and you cannot heal the person, that desperation of a mother will push people to go and get solution anywhere. And yet we continue to say Jesus is Lord. We continue to say, since I was young, now I am old. Out of a hundred people, if two people are healed, is that a good assessment? If there are 30 blind people and only two see, yes, we give God glory. But that's not all God can do. This is my obsession. This is why we refuse to get satisfied. The supernatural manifestation of God's power by which God demonstrates his ability to save, to heal, to deliver, to lift, to prosper his people. They are expressions of his love. They are also expressions of his might. Can I tell you this? Our world today is an arrogant world. The spirit that was on Nebuchadnezzar, Darius, the spirit that was on Herod, has now come and is sitting on the kings of the earth. You see the way they cheapen the church now, and they say it with all sense of pride. It's almost as if you are deserving of an award to the degree to which you downplay the church. It's not their fault. There is a dimension of the display of the power and the glory of God that can silence the mouth of all and sundry. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, surely this is the house of God, the gates of heaven. In the days of the generals, there were a few people who sat down and they were mocking, they were making mockery of, of um, Maria Woodward Eater. They laughed at her in her crusade and she looked at them and said, God judge you. The tongue of one of them protruded. They prayed and prayed, it didn't go down. He had to come himself and say, do you know what? I was stupid, now I know Jesus is Lord. She slapped the tongue and it went down. Now, when you have an example like that, that a popular madman on the street of Lagos a popular demonic suddenly he comes under the influence of this kingdom that we so boast about and his life comes under perfect order it is my prayer that we will not only watch miracles and signs and wonders in the life of those who have pressed a bit into God, but that there will be a hunger in us to say, Lord, I'm tired of an ordinary life. I'm tired of just praying and saying things I cannot defend. I'm tired of proposing dimensions about God I do not sustain the grace requirement to defend. I write these things unto you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. I have a few minutes. This is my final session. 
we are going to pray and I want to pray for you. It is my desire that something will come upon your life. Who is like him? The lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down and every ocean roars to the King of Kings. That's the God that we serve. Who is like him? The lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down and every ocean rose to the Lord of Lords. We will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the angels and the saints, sing praise. Listen, let there be a desperation in your heart as we pray for the next two minutes. Cry unto God. There is, there is a need, oh God, for my life to be part of the lives that you use to bring down the kingdom, the power and the glory of heaven. I'm tired of church as it is. I'm tired of religion. There is a hunger in my life. I contend for growth and transformation. I contend for value and productivity. I contend for wisdom and excellence. I contend for wealth and abundance. But in this season, oh God, and in this end time, I contend for the supernatural. Covenant nation, Wolfbeck, all following and all watching, lift your voice and let's pray. Shela baka paso bakata, leka parus kiata. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Someone is crying to the God of heaven. back oh God to the days of our fathers in this country some of you even come from those physical families lift your voice and pray here at Wafbeck, Lord we cry for a display of the kingdom the power the glory of God the effulgence of your spirit the anthem of Nigeria says that the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain Lord we pray that the graces and the mantles that were upon our fathers, the graces and the mantles that founded the church in Nigeria, we cry for a restoration of those ancient mantles. Spring up our wells for a time like this. Someone is praying. Pastors pray. It's time for fire on our altars again. Businessmen pray. A dimension of the wisdom and the excellence of the spirit. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth. Cross darkness the people. But upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. It says, Gentiles will come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. We are a praying people. Lift your voice and pray. Something from heaven is about to come upon your life. I assure you by the spirit of the living God.
Sele parotas kabaraduzi. We are still praying. Forget about who is at your left and right. It's time to receive. Wafpek, a platform for receiving something that can change your life. Shela barakatas kali parutas yata. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. This is a move. We need a move. This is a moment. Someone is praying, Lord, visit my ministry. Visit my life. What you showed me in my dreams and my visions. Here at Wafbeck, let it come alive, oh God. Fan the flames of my destiny. Fan the flames of my ministry. Hey, Palas Kabarata, you who are watching in your homes, watching in your offices, watching online, participate in the prayer. Open up your spirit from the U.S. to the U.K., from Asia to Africa. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hey, Labarato Salabakosia. Let something come upon my life, oh God, that will set me on fire, manifesting the supernatural, signs, wonders, tokens of his presence in my territory, in my community. For someone who is trusting God for healing, your health must change. Lord, I came to receive. I came to rise to a new dimension in the spirit. Wafbeck, an encounter with the word, an encounter with the spirit, receiving the supplies for the days ahead. Hallelujah. 
Now, please listen. Listen. I'm only here for a few minutes. Some of you are crying. Do not be ashamed of your tears. I came here with the spirit of revival. I came here with the spirit of grace. Please listen to me. Many years ago, I became sick and tired of religion. I became sick and tired of watching the sick and the oppressed go. Even though I came from a background that was evangelical, I knew there had to be more. My hunger drove me to begin to search the scripture and the life of men and women who were mightily used by God in every generation. I always share this story to edify the body of Christ. I speak on this platform to the church universal. There is something that the hunger of a man can do. When you become hungry and desperate for the truth, even in ignorance, the mercy of God honors it. Yes. I remember weeks turning to days, sir. Days turning to weeks. I said, God, you cannot send me to a generation with nothing. What will be my message? And that night, the Lord Jesus Christ came to me when he walked into my room I'm standing there and watching his majesty the one preachers talk about I said my God could I have been able to represent this man if I did not see him I was I was embarrassed by my ignorance of him even though I was preaching he never said a word, yet he said many things. It was then I knew in the realm of the spirit, you've heard me say it, that you do. It entered my spirit. He stretched his hand towards me and a beam of light entered my spirit. How I did not die is a mystery that I will ask him to explain when we get to heaven. And then in another vision, he mandated me. He said, every nation and every territory you go to, there must be someone in that meeting. The light that came from me to you, that light, there has to be someone that that light will land upon. Please help those under the anointing. When this happened at another separate encounter, the Lord spoke to me and said, my son, I give you my presence from this day as a gift. All of a sudden, I see this huge angel standing. And I said, who is this? And he said, this angel will walk with you. I said, what is his name? And he said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. And I said, is this not supposed to be God himself? I was confused. And this is the reason why many times you see some of these manifestations. I explain this thing to you so you don't mix what we are doing with respectfully speaking, some of the excesses you steer around. Because it is important that we give a precedence to the demonstration of the Spirit upon our lives. Lest it be confused. I have stayed faithful to that mandate. That every time God gives me an opportunity to minister to his people. I know that he draws people with the hunger to receive. We have few minutes and I plead for just a few minutes. But there is something that must come upon your life. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. He has come to you, his Israel. Pastor, you know one night I was I was watching William Branham. 
And while I was watching him, I could see the presence and the glory of God upon that man. And I said, why were people criticizing this man? Because at the later part of his life and his ministry, please help me with the drums, help me with the cymbal. And I was watching him with, with passion. I said, why would such a man be criticized by people who carried so much dimension of God? And I said, Lord, help us to honor the people that you have used. And while I prayed that something happened, suddenly there was like a cold sensation from my head, from my laptop. It started going down gradually, gradually over the course of 30 minutes. I didn't know what had happened. By the next meeting, as soon as I went there, suddenly I began to see the names of people. And I started seeing a lot of supernatural things. Until then, here and there, I would walk in the word of knowledge and here, and so on and so forth. I learned that honor is the key for reception. Whatever you despise, you will never have it, even if you are around the proximity of it. It's one of the reasons why we hardly receive in the body of Christ. There is no discernment. I want to pray. I see the angels of the Lord in this place. Help them. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the seasons. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your pleasing. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost from my left to my right. In the name of Jesus, the ignition that must come upon lives and destinies. Name. There are many of you, the dreams and the visions that you have had. You have seen yourself walking in supernatural dimensions. That grace is about to step into your life. One, that grace, help them please. Please help them take that grace in the name of Jesus. Fresh fire upon your destiny. I shift you to levels in the spirit, dimensions of power, dimensions of grace, drink of ancient fountains in the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Now please listen. Revelation is a spirit. There is the spirit of revelation. Paul called it the grace that makes all men see. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. There is a grace that can make all men see. I want to pray for you. There are men and women who came to Wafbeck with hunger. Hunger to receive. Spiritual illumination. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, may that grace come upon your life right now. May that grace come upon your life right now. Help her, please. Harusa ziata hashala pando ziaka. Kradaka shala kaso Hallelujah. Please listen to me. The Lord is leading in my spirit, even if it's in 30 seconds, to just say something. This is a vision that I've never shared, but my spirit will not allow me In that vision, I was in a pastor's conference. There were many men of God around this nation and across Africa. I say this to the glory of the Lord and I'm saying it just because of something God wants to do. And while I was there, there were fathers. I didn't know some of them. It looked like some of them had died, but they were still represented. And then among them, I began to see the fathers of faith in this nation. They were seated, but they were in front. Then there were other vacant seats in front of them. 
but people had not yet occupied them. I said, what is this that I'm seeing? All of a sudden, I saw our great father in the faith, that Yadebue, and he was sitting in one of the seats. And he looked through the crowd and pointed me slowly. He said, come. They were serving a meal. And he got up from the seat and sat on the ground with the meal. And I could see anger and bitterness. I was even afraid. While I was walking and I was coming out, I said, what is this? This our father wants to embarrass me. And he said, climb the stage. When I climbed it, he said, sit down, let's eat. I said, I would never do that. I came from a background where I was well trained. I will never do that. I honor you, sir. You are my father. You are my grandfather. I will not do that. He said, do you respect me? I said, yes. He said, eat. When I dipped my hands, all of a sudden, I came out from that vision. From that day, the creative dimension of the prophetic, the grace to speak and cause things. Forgive me if I sound arrogant. It is never my intention. But I'm saying that so that you will receive. This grace that is on us, we are not the originators of it. It's a relay. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I stand by the God of all flesh and I declare every challenge that has refused to give way over your life. Kabaruta shalakatu siapata. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that challenge is gone forever. Gone forever. Gone forever. Gone forever. Gone forever. Every door that would not open, I speak to it by prophecy. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted. Ancient doors, I speak to those doors, help them please. Ephata, be open. Ephata, be open. I speak to everyone here, trusting God for a job. According to the time of life, I declare by the spirit of grace, return with testimonies. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.